In this presentation, we will take a look at Form 941 within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, you go to the view drop down and select the open windows list. The form 941 is going to be one of the payroll forms. It's going to be a quarterly form. And the nice thing about QuickBooks is if we're running the paid version of QuickBooks, we can then generate the payroll tax forms. As long as we enter the data into the system correctly, then we should get a 941 that will be processed correctly fairly easily. The way we do this, and again, we're in the paid form to do this. If you want to practice in the manual settings, then you can do so, but you wouldn't be able to process the payroll forms with the manual or free version within the QuickBooks desktop. So to do that, there's a couple ways to get in there. I typically process the forms by going to the employees up top and go to payroll tax forms and then process payroll forms. And that'll take you into the employee center. So we're in the, the payroll side, we're in the file forms. We're looking here at the form 941. So then we could just go right in here and process the form 941. Again, assuming that we have all the detail into the system correctly, the paychecks have been entered correctly. We've got the correct dates in there. We correctly set up the settings in terms of the payroll items. And once that has all been done, then we can do the 941s. Now the 941s will, are going to be quarterly forms. So when we think about the quarter ended, we can have the drop down over here telling us the, the last calendar quarter which would probably be the most appropriate thing most of the time. The three quarters, there's three months per quarter, 12 divided by four, three months per quarter. So January, February, March, 03, 31, 1, 8, we're doing 2018. So March 31st, 2018 would be the first quarter. If we were to run that, then we have this detail uh, within the forms. If I say next, then we've got our, our detail here and then it's checking out the first quarter and it'll basically populate this information for us. We'll, we won't go through the whole calculation here again. We'll take a look at it when we process the forms within this problem several times. So we'll be able to get a chance to see it. The point here is that we want to be able to see what QuickBooks is doing to understand it enough to, to give ourselves a check and say, hey, does this look right? Does it look like it's doing the right thing? So we can have some idea if QuickBooks spits out something that is that can't be right. We want to be able to go in there and recognize that, be able to check it and see what is going on. So as we have these automated systems that start to process things and start to do things in an automatic, automated way, then that's great. But we can't completely lose our ability to assess if, if what's being generated is correct to some degree. And what that degree is can vary <laughs> depending on what the circumstances are. But to some degree, we want to be able to go through here and say, okay, do these numbers look reasonable and, and be able to make that assessment. I'm going to close this back out. And of course, we can do the, a similar type of process if we were to go back in here and choose the, the second pay period. So January, February, March, April, May, June, 06, 30, 1, 8. So the June statement end would be processing the similar data. And we would have for April, May, and June for uh, the second quarter of the year. And we would want to go through the, the similar information to make sure that everything is being populated in the correct format. We can then continue. And of course, if, if everything looked correct, we can finally submit uh, the form, which is great. We can process everything here. Closing this back out. Closing this back out. Now, if there was a problem, we even have the amended form, the 941X, so we can try to make adjustments if we need to. I highly recommend to check it before because making adjustments is, is not, could cause problems. So it's, this is one of the things it's better to, the old term is to measure twice and cut once. If you're a carpenter, measure twice, cut once. This is one of those areas where it's probably better to measure twice and cut once and rather than um, having to change things. So if we go back in here, not that I not that I've haven't changed things in the past, but if we go back 1231.18 to the end of the year, December 31st, and say okay, then we've got our, our year-end information 
similar type of calculation. There's going to be the four quarters, of course. We'll have to do this four times. Just wanted to show this one because it's got this extra data down here uh, because of the payroll information. And so we'll take a look at some of these forms and how these numbers are being generated in, in more detail in example problems. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.